Well, years ago, I was a youth minister at the First Presbyterian Church in Deerfield, Illinois, the far suburbs, northern suburbs of Chicago. One of the neat blessings about being on staff at this particular church was the bond that the staff created during the years that I spent there. Just some wonderful, blessed people. One of the people on the staff was a woman named Marn. Marn was the director of, of the uh, preschool and the daycare at First Press Deerfield, which among other things meant that Marn had this indomitable maternal instinct and it just oozed out wherever she went. Because of that, Marn was the sort of mother to everybody on our church staff. She would invite the staff over for dinner all the time. And when we had a bad day in ministry, she was always the first person to give a, le a listening ear to us. Well, during my first year in ministry at First Pres, I was not able to travel up to Wisconsin to <clears throat> be with my family for Thanksgiving. You kind of guess what happened, right? Naturally, Marn invited me to her home to have Thanksgiving dinner with her family. I really didn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't want to go because I didn't want to crash their family party. You know how that is, right? And more importantly, I didn't want to be that guy in the room that had nowhere else to go, you know? So every time she asked, I accept saying, oh, no thanks. Doug, come on home. Uh, no, that's okay. Well, finally, finally, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, Marn and her husband Chuck, they came right to my office door, knocked on the door and said, all right, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. We're picking you up at 10 a.m. We're taking you to our home. Well, Marn was six foot one. Chuck was six foot six. They weren't going to leave until I said yes. So I said, Okay, I'll go. <clears throat> and so we did. The next day, they drove to uh, my apartment, picked me up, drove me to their house. And driving into the driveway, Marn did something that I've always remembered. Before we got out of the car, she kind of tapped me on the, sh on the knee. And she quoted Robert Frost. And she said, Doug, home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. <laughs> Think of our place as home. And you know what? Martin and Chuck's place became my home away from home during those years at First Pres Deerfield. And the reason it became my home away from home was because every time I was there, I felt accepted. I felt loved. And most importantly, even though it wasn't my home, I never felt I had to earn the right to be there. Friends, one reason some of us never feel at home, no matter where we are, is because we mistakenly believe that we have to earn the right to be there. And I think that's exactly what was happening with the older sibling in the parable of finding home. <clears throat> in verses 25 through 31, we get this first extended glimpse of the older of the two siblings, right? We've been looking a lot at Junior, who's left and come back home. This is our first extended look at the older sibling. At this point in the narrative when he's introduced to us, uh, the wayward kid brother has just come home and dad has teed up this huge homecoming party. If you'd like, you can follow with me in verse 25 in your handout. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you the first extended glimpse of the older brother. <coughs> now his elder son was in the field. When he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave said, your brother's come home. Your father's killed the fatted calf because he got him safe and sound. Then the older brother, he became angry and refused to go in. So his father came out and begged and pleaded with him. The older son said to his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working for you like a slave. And I've never 
never disobeyed your command. Yet you've never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured the property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. The older brother. So throughout this series, I've been asking you all, which of the two siblings in this story do you most relate to? Which of their story is your story? Well, you know, in all my years of ministry, more often than not, people who've been a part of the church and have been walking with Jesus Christ for most of their life, guess which of the two siblings they gravitate towards? Anyone? Yeah, the older one, yeah. Meanwhile, people who, who don't know Jesus or who are, who are new to the Christian faith, more often than not, they tend to connect with the younger son. You know, and there's good reason why those of us who've been a part of the church for a long time connect with the older son. It's easy to understand why. The older brother, he's the responsible one, right? He's the cautious one. He's the dependable, duty-bound one. He's the one that always has his nose to the grindstone, right? Yeah. He would sacrifice without complaining. He always followed directions. Compliant, overachieving. He always did the right thing the right way. Sounds like an older brother, doesn't it? He never got in trouble because he rarely did anything wrong in the first place. And he was always the one that went to church, always the one that read his Bible, always the one that prayed, always the one that when the doors of the church were open, he was the one there volunteering. How many older brothers do we have here? Yeah, maybe. Maybe some older brother types? Sure. Let's take a closer look at the older brother. Is it any wonder that we meet this older brother in the story. The older brother is where? He's working. Yes, he's out in the fields working. That's what older brothers do. In fact, he is so into his work, he doesn't even realize that the homecoming party has started until when? Until he gets close enough that he hears the music and the dancing. And then, as he hears about the party, and this is the such a crucial part in the narrative. Upon learning that dear old dad is throwing this homecoming party, the older brother does two things. Scripture says, first of all, he became what? Angry. Yeah, he was angry. And then he refused to go inside. Do you catch the irony here? The loyal older brother refused to enter the home that he never left. He refuses to go into the home that he felt his, in, his entire life he was loyal to. You know what that's called? That's called alienation, isn't it? Suddenly he's alienated from the thing he was most loyal to. Why? What's up with that? Well, you know, earlier I asked you you know, multiple choice question. Take, take a look at that in your, in your little handout for just a second if you want to. Why do you think the older brother refused to come home? Why did he stay outside? Was it because he resented his father's love for his kid brother? Okay. Or was it because he was upset with his kid brother? I think we're going where all the above, aren't yes. we? <laughs> because he felt entitled to his own party? Yes. <laughs> because he thought the party was a waste of time and money? Yes. Or because he never felt at home in the first place? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you think about this for a little while. No. <laughs> for what it's worth, I think the older brother never felt at home to begin with. And the reason was because he believed he had to earn his father's love. And friends, if you are unsure of the father's love, you will always see home with God 
as something you have to earn. Let me say that again. If you are unsure of the Father's love, you will always see home with God as something you have to earn. And friends, I think more of us fall into this trap than we care to believe. In verse 28, the older, the older brother says, or it says, then the older brother became angry, refused to go in. So his father came out and began to plead with him. And friends, if you're unwilling to come home, especially when the father begs you, you know what you are? You're really, really lost, aren't you? How lost was the older brother? Look at how the older brother answered his father's invitation to come home in verse 29. The older brother says, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you. Like a slave for you. And I've never disobeyed your command. Do you see how the older brother frames his relationship with his father? Do you see that? It's based entirely on actions, entirely on trying to earn his father's love. I've been working like a slave for you, he grumbles. Do you hear that? It's like the, the, the older brother feels that he has to prove he's worthy of dad's love. And friends, if you're unsure, of the Father's love. You'll always see home with God as something you have to earn. And if you're not at home with God, you know what you are? You're lost. You're lost, that's right. So, why do you think the older brother refused to come home, despite the Father's begging? You know, in this, in this narrative, I hear a man who is lost in his resentment. Do you hear? Do you hear that? Lost in his resentment. The older brother was lost in his resentment, tragically assuming that he was more worthy of his father's love than his kid brother. Another reason the older brother refused to come home was because he was lost in his entitlement. Listen at the end of verse 29. The entitled older brother says, you've never even given me a young goat. Evidently, the older brother assumed that the father owed him something for all those years of sacrifice and for all those years of hard work, right? <coughs> I think he refused to come home because he was lost in his resentment, because he was lost in his sense of entitlement, and finally, because he was lost in his moral superiority complex. Listen to verse 30. Verse 30, the older brother says these revealing words. He says, but when this son of yours came home. Did you catch that? Totally disowning his younger brother. Totally Dissing, Junior. When this son of yours comes home, we don't hear any words of acceptance, do we? We don't hear any words of love, do we? We don't hear any words of forgiveness or welcome. All we hear from the older brother is condemnation and exclusion. He's lost in his moral superiority complex. So this is how I see the big picture in this passage. The older brother spent his entire life believing that home was something that he had to earn. So he worked, he sacrificed his entire life trying to earn his father's love. But then, <laughs> then, Junior shows up on daddy's doorstep. After squandering the family fortune, he shows up on daddy's doorstep and was loved unconditionally and without having to earn a thing. And suddenly Big Brother's world is rocked. 
He has no category for this. Suddenly, he's not going to come in despite the father's pleading. You see, he was lost, right? He was lost in his resentment. He was lost in his sense of entitlement. He was lost in his moral superiority and all of his judgmentalism. Friends, make no mistake. The older brother in this narrative is far more lost than the younger prodigal son ever was. That's also how many of us church folk get lost as well. So how are you feeling about being the older brother right now? How's that working for you, huh? Maybe uh, second guessing a little bit, right? More importantly, for those of you who see yourself as more the older brother, are you feeling at home with the Lord these days? Or are you putting on a good show? But today, for the first time, you realize maybe you're more lost than you realize. Maybe it's because you've been defining your relationship with God based on your actions. Maybe it's because you feel like you've got to earn the Father's love. But the older brother shows us what happens when we define our relationship with the Lord based on our actions, when we try to earn God's love. Sometimes we older brothers, we assume that our Heavenly Father owes us something. You know how that goes, right? God owes us something for all those sacrifices, for all that hard work that nobody ever saw, for all those late night meetings when the preacher wouldn't shut up, <laughs> for all those times nobody thanked me for everything I did. Or perhaps you feel like you, you're owed a specific answer to your prayers. Or you're owed just a little bit extra protection from life's problems. Or you're owed a certain amount of blessings from God. And in the absence of that, we who are older brothers get increasingly lost in our resentment. <coughs> in our entitlement. Some older brothers assume that all that obedience, all that moral rectitude entitles us to decide which sinners are more and which sinners are less worthy of God's love. Some older brothers start excluding others from the church and from God's love based on some sort of moral ledger, based on some specific behaviors with no awareness of their own imperfections. <laughs> Older brothers unable to, are, are, are oftentimes people who are unable to freely give the love that Jesus so freely gives to us. Older brothers can get lost in their moral superiority complexes. If you think home with God is something you have to earn, you're going to end up lost. Ultimately, you're going to end up unwilling to come home to the Father, even when the Father pleads and begs for you to come inside. Are you lost in resentment? <clears throat> Are you lost in <clears throat> entitlement? Are you lost in some superiority complex? Well, maybe that's, that's not you. But you're still the older brother. You're just that compliant older brother who has spent your entire life trying to be responsible, trying to always do the right thing. You've gone to church. 
You've raised your kids. You've been a model citizen. In fact, in fact, you're actually kind of boring because you're so predictable and moral. <clears throat> but all the while, you have never quite felt like you're good enough to be loved by God. If the Heavenly Father were giving out letter grades, you'd probably give yourself at best a C+. Plus. Every time prayer goes unanswered, you assume it's because you, you weren't good enough. Every time something goes wrong, you're racked with guilt because you feel like you have failed your Heavenly Father. So your spiritual life it's all about hard work. Always trying to earn God's love. I need to go to church more. I need to get more involved here. If I was only a little better at this, if I could only do this a little bit harder, then it would be better. If that's the case, you're just as lost. <laughs> Are you a lost older brother? And do you want to come home? If so, then here's the way home. At the end of the conversation between the older brother and the father, the father says, son, you're always with me. All that's mine is yours. Home, like our heavenly father's love. Friends, it's a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it because home with God is the place where when you have to go there, God has to take you in because you are cherished. You are cherished by God. If you're an older brother, You've been trying hard to earn the Father's love all these years. Here's, here's, my, here's my challenge to you. Stop it. Quit it. You don't have to earn it. Coming home to God is a gift. God wants to give you his love. All you need to do, turn away from the stuff that got you lost in the first place. Turn away from your resentment. Turn away from your entitlement. Turn away from your superiority. Turn away from your insecurities. Turn away from your doubts. And hear these words as if the Father were speaking directly to you. Daughter, son, you're always with me. All that's mine is yours. You don't have to earn a thing. Come home. Come home. It's time to come home. And friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.